Hello all and welcome. This is Alex J. Khan. My name is Alexandria and we are going to go over some of the ways I customized my UI. So first of all, my setup, I took from, I actually downloaded from Michael Taylor's site. Uh, he goes as Cryrid, C-R-Y-R-I-D. And if you go, go ahead and Google that, it's the first search that pops up. He has his own um, downloads and tutorials and things. And so I used his uh, custom UI download. I think he has three or four of them up there. Um, they're pretty neat. So if you want to start out with that and then customize from there, I would totally do that. That's exactly what I did. Um, I took his and I, I changed it all up really. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of things that he did that I, I was unaware that you could do. So yeah, I, I, I learned it now so I can actually teach you guys how to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and just draw and hit T. So I'm editing. Um, otherwise, a lot of these buttons aren't going to be available to you. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to hit Polymesh 3D too. Um, there's certain things that don't show up if it's not a Polymesh. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, um, the reason why I have this set up the way I do, I have brushes over here and then I have buttons, um, more of button clicking stuff over here. The reason why I have brushes over here is because I'm right-handed and when I'm using my tablet, I'm able to make these arcing motions. Um, so I click a brush and I arc and start sculpting and it's kind of a more fluid motion. Um, I find it helps a lot more. I did have brushes on this side over here, like maybe six months ago or so. Um, and I think it lasted for about a day because I realized I was making really jerky motions and it was kind of, it was not natural. <laughs> it wasn't a very natural feeling. Um, so you might want to test that out. Um, I, I'm not telling you to 100% put your brushes over here, uh, but go ahead and try it out because I think it would be a more fluid way of working. Um, I also have materials, some other stuff I click on, uh, shit up here that I use a lot, and then I took off the shit on the sides. So the reason why I did that is because I don't use that stuff. And I'll go ahead and show you what the... I'm going to restore the standard UI. So this is what you usually see when you open up ZBrush. Uh, there's a bunch of shit over here that you don't use and a lot of stuff over here that you do a lot of clicking on. And a lot of the stuff that you do a lot of clicking on is what I've made into buttons. So let's go ahead and get started with making your own setup. Let me also show you. Uh, nope. So this is also the type of window that you start up in. If you want your window to fill out the space, what you do is you say document, document, auto fit window size. So what that does is it, and hit new document, what that does is it fits your entire window. So if you take buttons and stuff off of here and make your window bigger, then you can go ahead and make another new document to make that bigger as well. Once your document is the right size that you want it at, which you could even adjust it here. Um, but once it's at something that you like, go ahead and just save it to back it up and then go ahead and say save up as startup doc. What this button will do is every time you open up ZBrush, that's the document it'll use. For me, I also changed the color of the document right here. So if you change the background color, I believe I just lightened up the border color. The border color is this top. Or no, I'm sorry, it's the, there's like a thin pixel outline around here. Um, I only change, I only really changed this guy. Uh, if you notice, you can, I clicked left, I left clicked it, and now you can drag and like go to any color and it'll select it. So if you go over here, you can pick a more orangey color, which is obnoxious. So I'm not going to do that. Next thing. Now that we have our you know document set up, go ahead and go to preferences, configuration, enable customize. What this does, if you notice some windows popped up and down, um, what this does is it allow you, allows you to move all of these buttons in the window. So you can throw all of this stuff out. You can put more stuff in. You can put brushes over here. And we're going to go ahead and just go all over all of that. So let me do the first thing that everyone always asks me is uh, changing color. Um, that was one of the first things I wanted to learn to do, and so let's go ahead and let me show you. So if you go to eye colors, 
you see the things that are orange. I go ahead and just change all of the orange to whatever color I wanted. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the way you change colors, you click on it and you drag over the color that you like. And it could be just anywhere in this window. It could be this pink red thing. It could be this. So what I do, rather than trying to figure out what color this is, I go ahead and pick a color, find the one I want, which is usually like this type of blue. So now it's in this little swatcher area um, and it makes it easier to select that color. So now I'm going to go ahead and select that color. Come on. Um, and now I'm going to just go ahead and select, 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 and now we're all done. Yay. It's blue. And you can pick whatever color you want. I prefer blue. It makes me, makes me happy. Next, let's go ahead and I'm going over my checklist. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Oh, the next thing that you can do is you can actually go through these pre-made menus. Um, it has color interface color, uh, blah. It has interface colors that you can go ahead and go through. Um, actually just go ahead and flip through these. There's about, I think there's like 20 or so that you can go through. Uh, but let's go ahead and we're just going to go back here. It reset all my colors, which is fine and dandy. It's easy to change them back. Whoop. There we go. Alrighty. Um, along with the colors, it also has different interface layouts, which is great because if you find one that you really like, just go with it and edit it. Um, that's what I did with Michael Taylor's is I used his, um, I used his free download and I just edited it to make it my own. So that's exactly what you guys can do. You can either download from his site or you can just find one of these and yeah, that's kind of, it actually kind of looks like mine. Smaller buttons, everything. So anyways, let's go ahead and go back. Yeah, this is kind of the original. Um, let's go back and let's go ahead and show you how to take off these buttons and put more on. So I'm going to go to configuration and I'm going to make sure that I have enable customize selected. And what that allows me to do is if you hold control and alt, and then left mouse click and drag out, see how I have the button attached? And I can put it anywhere I want and it selects where you're trying to put it. So I can put it down here, I can put it here, I can put it up here, or I can put it right in the middle of the document and it disappears, which is what I want to do because I don't want anything over here, at least not in this gigantic size. The places I would avoid putting it is up here and down here. Just because if you put it up here, when you say preferences and you uncheck enable customize, what happens is you have this gigantic space taken up now by the big red ball. <laughs> so let's not do that. Enable customize, take that shit off and see, it'll be nice and clean. So anyways, let's go back and enable customize. So again, it's control and alt and you click anything you really want. So a lot of this stuff over here, I actually took off because I know the hotkeys for them or I don't need to see them if they're on. Like expose, I don't need to see. Um, I did keep dynamic solo, so I think I put that, I think I put that here or down here. Do do. Kept some of these. Oh, I kept this guy. And then I'm just gonna uncheck enable customize just to make sure that's popping down. Perfect. All right, so while we're in a enable customize, I can go ahead and take off all these. I can even take these ones off. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to kind of manipulate anything you really want. Um, the buttons snap together. You don't want to try to overlap them, obviously, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, things you don't really use uh, or don't really care to see, go ahead and take them off. Like I took off um, active points and total points because I don't need to see those at all times. Um, you can hover over the, uh, the object and it'll show you right in the bottom left corner. So I didn't need to see that type of stuff. But things like brushes, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that over here. So if you notice right now, like all the brushes aren't accessible, go ahead and just draw 
draw on a cylinder or something just <clears throat> just to make the, the make ZBrush live I guess so once that's done you can actually take any of these brushes you, you can take anything that you find in any of these menus and put them on your new custom UI so let me go go ahead and just grab a couple brushes and I'll put them down here do do because we need two move tools. <laughs> I'm just grabbing random ones. And then let's go to material. Let's grab some materials maybe. If you wanted to, you could even grab stuff like this and put them in places that you really want. Um, I usually just avoid the left and right sides because I really like having a wider sort of screen. So let me go ahead. Actually, I don't. I don't use gradient. Put these down here. I'm just imitating what I have for my custom UI. Um, and then I took off all of these and I put them elsewhere. Um, if you use them, then keep them. If you don't, then throw them out. But it's up to you. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is if you notice, these buttons are a lot wider than the ones I have. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to basically narrow those down. If you go to preferences and go to, I always have a hard time finding this one, interface, there we go, UI. If you notice, you always have this guy checked. If you uncheck it, you can even see in the right column that all the buttons get narrowed down. And that's what I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and narrow those guys down. And what that allows me to do is pack more shit where I want it. Yay. So cool, so now I have brushes, I have some materials, I have some things here, but let's go ahead and add some of the words that I always use, like mirror. So again, hold control alt, left mouse drag, and I'm gonna put it up here. Uh, I also use smart resim a lot. We'll go ahead and put that guy there. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty easy to, like once you know how to kind of maneuver and put things where you want it, it's pretty easy to customize your own UI. So yeah, that about wraps it up. Let me just double check. Button width, using that, yeah. Yeah, we're all good to go. All right, so let's go to preferences. Let's say ours is all set and really, really pretty. I'm gonna uncheck enable customize and we're kind of all set, yay. But let's say, oh, I wanna fill out my document. Document. Make sure it says width size, new document. Would you like to save changes? Nope. So now we have this nice gigantic document. And if you want to save the document, make sure that you don't have, make sure that you don't have anything in your document. Say save as startup doc so that this guy s comes up every single time you start it up. And then as far as our configuration goes, if, you want, if we want to save our UI, go ahead and save it um, as a backup. I usually save it so that I can transfer it over um, when I go to work and stuff. And then say store configuration so that when you store it, every time it opens up, it'll open up to your custom UI. So let's go ahead and restore my custom one. Yay. <laughs> um, so this is my custom UI and you can have this too. Uh, you can either go to Cryrid. Again, it's C-R-Y-R-I-D or you can go ahead and just try to make your own. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because you know the steps now. So good luck, thank you. Uh, I do apologize if this is this video is a little jerky, but um, I'm doing this late at night and I really wanted to get this out to you guys because I was getting a lot of emails requesting a lot of this information. So I just wanted to get that out there for you guys. Um, thank you again, thanks for watching. Thank you for the support. And I hope you guys have a great, great day, great weekend, whatever time this is and <laughs> good luck, bye.